Hey everyone, thanks very much for joining today. My name is Fergus Hurley, and I'm the product manager for Android Vitals. I'm really excited to talk to you today about the past, present, and future of Android Vitals. So to start off, what is Android Vitals? I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of it already, but just to make sure, Android Vitals is Google's initiative to help improve the stability and performance of Android devices. Uh, we're doing a lot of different things uh, to be able to improve this. One big part of it is within the Play Console, we now have a section called Android Vitals. And that's where we report to you different performance metrics we're going to, we're going to cover in this talk. How do we actually uh, power this product is uh, an interesting question to start off with. Well, hundreds of millions of users have opted in to sharing their device usage and diagnostics data with uh, Google, and you are partners. And so we uh, share that data in a privacy compliant way uh, within the product. I'm going to start by going through some lessons we've learned over the last 18 months since we launched Vitals at I.O. last year uh, from top developers out there um, that are big and small um, that have actually uh, used Android Vitals and got a lot of success from using it. So hands up here who wants less one-star ratings. OK, if you don't have your hand up, you might be at the wrong conference, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but most people want to avoid them. And what we found when we looked at the review corpus on Google Play, which is pretty large, uh, is that 40% of all one-star reviews where we extract a topic are talking about stability and bugs. And over the past year, the percentage of users talking about stability and bugs in the reviews has gone down by 18%, which is pretty amazing. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, some of the developers who have actually contributed to this reduction. The Merge Dragons team which is behind a very popular Zenga game. They used Android Vitals to be able to pinpoint where specifically there was an issue with their application. And this resulted in them being able to reduce their one-star reviews by 50%. The very popular Reddit app used Android Vitals to be able to reduce their crash rate by 75%. And they did this um, because they were able to see the category benchmarks in the Play Console Android Vitals section. And that was able to make the case with their uh, leadership that they were, uh, had room for improvement. And then when they actually uh, improved their uh, metric, they were able to show leadership, hey, we've actually uh, done what we set out to do. And now we're one of the most stable apps out there. The Lovo team signed up for the anomaly alert emails in the Play Console. And as a result, they got notified as soon as there was an issue uh, with the uh, ANR rate of their application. They had a huge spike caused by an SDK that they were using in their application. And even though you might be building an amazing product yourself and think that it's very stable, I'm sure you use third-party libraries. And some of those could introduce issues in your application. So you want to become aware of these things as soon as possible. And the anomaly alert emails help you with that a lot. They quickly disabled the ads SDK that was causing the, the issue. And then they shifted a new fix that actually reduced their ANR rate back down to 0.25%. The ABA English team is a pretty small team, and they don't have infinite resources to be able to spend on performance. And we don't think that you should spend all your time focusing on performance either. But we realize that you have to keep an eye on performance all the time, and that it might make sense for you to take a quarter to actually just focus on improving the performance of your application um, and hold off on doing features. Maybe do that in, as part of your 2019 Q1 planning, or do a spring clean uh, for Q2 of next year. Uh, the ABA English team did this, and they spent one quarter of focused effort and reduced their uh, ANR rate by 97% as a result. This uh, and a bunch of other things resulted in them being able to increase their star rating to 4.6 stars. Now, obviously, you can't get a 4.6 star rating by just focusing on vitals, but we guarantee that you'll never get such a high rating if you have terrible vitals. OK, so I've gone through some examples of individual app developers who are using vitals. What we've actually also done is we looked at, of the top 1,000 uh, apps on Play, uh, we looked at their engagement in the Vital section since I.O. And what we found is that the developers who engaged most in the Vital section, like the top 10%, they reduced their crash rate by 50% over that time period. And this isn't just good for those developers and those apps. This is really good for Android end users. This resulted in 3 billion more stable uh, installs on the platform. So we've talked about stability, 
Uh, another major area that users talk about uh, it, when they leave one star uh, rate of use is resource usage issues. And this is uh, battery, network, memory, et cetera. And we have many metrics in the vital section around battery. And some of these metrics are interrelated. So one of the metrics we have is excessive network usage in the background. And so this is bad for users in two ways. It's consuming their data plan, and it's uh, wasting their battery in the background. Uh, we have uh, two metrics that we especially focus on in this area. They're wake-ups and wake-locks. And I'll come back to them in a bit. But the Jamo team focused on their wake-ups rate. And uh, what they say is that they wouldn't have even noticed or been able to fix their excessive wake-ups issue without using Android Vitals. Uh, because we have uh, a lot of insights into your battery usage that there are very few other tools that can actually help you with. Uh, and this resulted in them being able to reduce their excessive wake-up rate by 70%. Great. Now we're going to jump over to how you can actually increase your five-star reviews. And uh, what we find is that over the past year, we've had more users mentioning uh, speed, design, and usability, which is what 70% of the five-star reviews um, talk about when we are able to find topics in them. The Mercado Libre team, which is one of the largest e-commerce um, apps in the world, uh, it's number one in Latin America, uh, they were building a new feature into their application. They required them to ask for a specific permission. Um, this resulted in a bad user experience where users actually had a very high denial rate of this permission. They were able to see that in Android Vitals and then be able to redesign that feature to uh, give users an explanation of why they needed it, um, that permission, and only ask when the users actually really needed that for that specific feature and not really early on in the process. The Mercado Libre team is a pretty big team. And one of the things they found very useful with files is the ability to be able to keep track on many of the metrics and be able to see that across their startup time, there was a regression introduced, which caused the startup time of their application um, to become very long. And so they were able to then figure out which team had specifically had caused that issue and then work to be able to debug that issue. The Laveau team um, where it used uh, the Android Vital startup time and the Firebase performance monitoring tool to be able to really get deep insights into the startup of their application. So the Android Vitals covers the platform level data collection, but doesn't cover exactly in your application where the issues might occur. And so that's why we encourage you to use Firebase performance monitoring as well to be able to understand where specific issues are occurring. They were able to figure out that their login and sign up um, flow is taking way too long, and they decided to do a rewrite of that part of the application. So what's in Vitals today? So Vitals consists of five performance areas, um, which I think you'll all agree are things that uh, you don't like to have happen when you're using apps. You don't want them to crash. You don't want them to drain all your battery. You don't want them to be slow in rendering, um, or requesting permissions that they don't need, or be slow to start. And so we have 15 metrics covering these five performance areas today. And across each of these metrics, we provide three-dimension breakdown at a minimum. So we uh, show you uh, OS version, uh, your APK breakdown, um, device breakdown. And uh, where relevant, we provide other information as well um, when it's possible. A new feature that we launched uh, at I.O. this year is category benchmarks. Um, this is where you can now be able to see, compared to other apps in your category, how do you stack up, relatively so, to the, your peers? across every single metric. And we give you the 25th, 75th, and even the 50th percentile breakdown for each of those uh, category benchmarks. And that can really help you be able to understand, OK, this metric I'm doing OK on, um, and this one I'm actually uh, falling way behind. I need to invest there. I mentioned uh, the anomaly alert emails uh, earlier. Uh, these are available in the console today. You have to opt in to receive them. And so I encourage you, if you're not uh, opted in already, uh, to sign up today and encourage the rest of your team to sign up as well. And this is where we notify you when there's a significant change in the a &R crash rate um, of your application, um, where we have a spike in the clusters, um, or across uh, the core vitals, which I'm going to talk about right now. There are 15 Android vital metrics. It's a lot of metrics. Um, 
We think all of them are important to deliver the best possible user experience, but some are more important than others. Um, as talked about earlier, the uh, leading contributions to one-star reviews are stability issues and battery issues. So we have four core vials that uh, are divided between those two areas. So crash rate and ANR rate, ANR rate being application not responding, are the two stability ones, and stuck partial wake locks and excessive wake-ups being the two in the battery area. For each core vital, we provide you a bad behavior threshold. This is where, if you're above that threshold, you're sort of failing the class. Um, that bad behavior threshold is established by looking at the top 1,000 apps and seeing, OK, the bottom 25% of apps have, uh, are above this rate, and so th that's where the bad behavior is. We launched uh, the pre-launch report a couple of years ago. This is where, when you upload your APK to the Play Console test tracks, we will generate a report within an hour of how your application performs across those uh, different uh, 10 Android devices that we have in the test lab when a robot is navigating your application for about 10 minutes. It gives you a report showing you uh, screenshot clustering and a bunch of insights into accessibility issues and privacy issues, and also flags crashes. One thing we recently did is that we enabled you, when you look at a crash cluster in the vital section, to be able to see if we have a pre-launch report crash that we've detected that matches that crash from the field. This is pretty useful, because with the pre-launch report, these are test lab devices, so there aren't the same privacy restrictions in place as there are with the uh, data from the field, of course. And uh, so here, we can be able to show you the video of the robot interacting with your application, so you can be able to quickly reproduce that issue yourself, and we provide a lot more logs and detailed information. We also did the reverse. So we now have the ability to be able to see, when you're looking at a pre-launch report, is this a crash that is already happening in the field, or is this one that maybe just was introduced with my latest APK, but that hasn't actually reached users yet? We have over 100K developers using Android Vitals today. Uh, hands up here who's using Android Vitals. Cool. Great. Thank you guys for using it. Um, one of the things that I found most interesting about uh, this project um, is that we've now expanded the number of users who are using um, performance metrics, or what we call them like engineering metrics. So I was previously working on apps uh, on another team at Google. And I was, also did that external to Google before. And one of the things I really struggled with was understanding how these metrics were doing, because it, you had to um, have the latest version of the code and be able to run the profilers. And now we've made it so that it's really easy for all the people in your company to be able to get access to these performance metrics and be able to see how you're doing relatively so to other people and make the case for investing here versus in other features. I've shown uh, some uh, case studies from different titles um, here. And as you'd expect, you have an Android engineer, head of mobile engineering, and product manager using it. But now we have lead mobile product managers using uh, performance metrics. We have a CTO, VP of product, and even COOs using uh, engineering metrics. And so I encourage you uh, and your teams all to start using these metrics uh, in your conversations um, with your uh, senior leadership and, and with the wider team. Um, and if you don't, probably going to get left behind, because uh, quality across the whole Android ecosystem is improving. Now you might think, OK, that's great. Those, that's impacting those other developers, but it's not impacting me. My app is awesome, even though it says it has a high crash rate. I don't believe you. Um, well, <laughs> uh, we looked at uh, the data of uh, users who experience a high crash rate versus users who experience a lower medium crash rate. And what we find is that users who have a higher crash rate for the same app leave 52% more one star reviews or ratings uh, than users with a lower medium one. And so really, I would encourage you to start using Filestay if you're not. Great. So what is the, in the future of Android Vitals? Well, we've built a lot of features, as you can uh, tell so far. And so really, the future of Android Vitals is you guys <laughs> using the product. And, uh, and so what we're going to do is, right now, we're going to try something different. Um, and I want everyone to stand up. Um, and uh, talk to the people beside you. So try and find some, yeah, stand up, stand up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and find someone beside you who hopefully you have not worked with, um, and just introduce yourself. And we're going to take two minutes for one person to talk about their vitals and how they're approaching it, and who in their company uses it, what are the best practices they've followed, and then switch role after two minutes. I'll give you.
two minutes now, and then we'll switch over. So yeah, so I hope you learned uh, something uh, from the people you talked to um, and made a new friend, hopefully, as well. Uh, so I would encourage you to uh, talk to other people about how they're approaching their vials. Um, there's a lot of documentation available uh, online uh, to help you as well. And uh, we'll be at the uh, booth outside um, afterwards, just on the right-hand side when you walk out of this room, uh, if you have any questions um, as well. One of the things that you probably uh, realize talking to the other person is that one of the biggest problems with vials today is actionability. Um, and we've heard you guys uh, and your feedback. We really appreciate that. And I wanted to assure you that that is something that we're working hard to improve. And uh, we will have more to come on that in the future. We do believe that the data is uh, valid in terms of telling you the direction to go, as in like you're doing good or bad versus other people. Um, but we think we can do better in terms of helping you actually be more efficient at fixing the problem. But that is a really hard problem. Um, and uh, we're working on changes to the whole OS itself. Um, but those things take a while to propagate uh, across the uh, Android user base, uh, and then to have enough uh, data to be able to share back with you within the console. But it's definitely something we are working on. I um, want to thank you all very much for joining us today. Um, and uh, best of luck with improving your vials. And I hope I get to share your vial success stories in our talk next year. Thank you.